Hello. Yes, hello, Everfree Northwest. How are y'all doing? Okay, that's, that's, I say, how are you doing? That's the, equivalent, the audience equivalent of me. I want to ask, how are you doing? Okay, that's the audience equivalent of what you just did. Well done. There we go. <laughs> Greetings and welcome, one and all. We're so glad to see so many people here today. And we are very excited to show you a couple of the directors of our favorite series on television today. <laughs> Starting with... Mr. Denny Liu, who, and he's been the director for uh, Mucha Lucha and George of the Jungle TV Am series. Am I here or here? Wherever you want to be. Well, whichever one this one says. Here oh. it is. Denny Liu. Here we go. Take the wrong And seat. the Pound Puppies TV series, and of course, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. So, thank you very much for joining us here today. Hi everybody, how's it going? Oh, it's way too loud. <laughs> I'll back it up. Yeah. Thank you. Audio is magic. To so, be here. <laughs> because magic, magic, magic. Because you have a powerful voice. So low. <laughs> and for our our next celebrity, he has worked as an animator for Tales from the Far Side 2, animator for Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Any Ed, Ed, and Eddie fans out there? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. He's worked as a layout supervisor for Little's Pet Shop worked on Super Noobs, and has worked with My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, as an animation director and genuine, genuine director. He is the director known as Tim Stubby. <laughs> all righty. So just get it all prepped here. So... Of course, we like to start things off just kind of easygoing, and that means with maybe some gifts for our guests. Starting with Tim, you mentioned on Twitter that you and your puppy were coming to this uh, oh, event. He stayed home. He stayed home. He stayed well, at home. Okay. Because well, I want to drink at night, and I can't leave him in the room. Mm, oh, it makes sense. And uh, but there was talk that the the, the dog, your dog would answer questions, which. Any person who's owned a dog knows if they wrote a tell-all, if they could talk, all our secrets would be out there to the world. Yes. Uh -huh. And so, if the puppy ever does feel inclined to spill the beans, this bone might uh, distract oh. them long enough. What a sweet guy. Thank you. Very nice. And Denny has, has talked about, uh, over the course of his career, a lot of animators get together and they would live sketch, uh, just work on boards. But now... The paradigm has shifted to now everyone's got a Cintiq, which I've seen one of those. These are super powerful tablets. And I can't afford one of those. <laughs> you got them a Cintiq? If anyone can bring back the classic pe pencil and paper, Denny, oh my God. <laughs> I think it's you. Thank you so much. Thank there you. you <laughs> Very kind. So, for this panel, we're going to just open, uh, break the ice with a few questions for both, both uh, on career and production for the show. And then we will open it up to you fine people with a microphone up yonder for uh, folks to ask their questions. But let's start with Denny. All right. Denny, you began your career as a web designer, but meeting a friend and seeing his work got you interested in animation. So what advice would you offer people who are considering a career change? How do you know these things? <laughs> <laughs> he does a lot of research. I can tell. That's a lot of research. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, I, I started with the graphic design, and then uh, I was here. Actually, well, I was back in Taiwan. Then I came here. I was like, oh, what am I going to do? Continue with my career, graphic design. So I went to college. On my third year, I met a body. He's like, hey, you want to see my reel? I'm like, what? what's real? I, I didn't understand that English at that time. And then he showed it to me, I'm like, what? You can make your picture move? <laughs> because that's not graphic design, right? Graphic design is all print. And then so that got me into like, oh, maybe I should try this. So I tried it, and then here is my answer to your question. It's I, based on what I have for graphic design, I prep a portfolio, and I apply for the school. But then I got in because I wouldn't say I'm the best drawer, but I can draw because 
all the I can cover all the basics for whatever animation needed. Uh, and that's what you kind of need to do, be a, at least a decent drawer to do anything else, to animate, to think about timing and all that stuff. And that's how you got me into the industry. Excellent. <laughs> now, Tim, you worked as an animator for Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Were jawbreakers a requirement of the business? <laughs> they, they sadly were not, but we... Uh, what was a uh, requirement of the business were caffeine pills because we worked about 20 hour days doing stuff back then. Oh, lordy. So it was a different time, lots of drawing, lots of throwing your drawings away because you feel terrible that they look to you awful and, you know, artist things. Mm -hmm. Nothing's good enough. Uh, but it was, I mean, it was worth it. I mean, I got to work, I worked on the title sequence, so my name is on every episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie in the credits, which is great. It was a good time, right. different time. And you mentioned uh, drawing, so Ed and Eddie was hand-drawn. Yes. But as opposed to My Little Pony's more flash-based. Right. Uh, what, uh, what are the strengths and weaknesses for both hand-drawn and flash? Well, I mean, flash is great because you can do it way faster. Uh, you can, for reuse things, walk cycles and whatnot, it's in your computer. Once you do something once, you can keep doing it over and over. It's also, it's a lot easier for a person with a limited budget, like in your home, to be able to produce something yourself, whereas hand-drawn, you know, you have to draw it on paper, you have to get cells, you have to put it on the cells, you have to paint it, you have to get a giant camera, shoot it. Not something you can really do in your home. So, speed, ease. So it sounds like Flash is sometimes the more appealing of the two. Flash is, it's, it's different. It's, oh. it's appealing in the way that you can, you can get something out pretty quickly. Mm. You could still draw on the Cintiq. I mean, you could, you could draw in Flash. Oh, there you go. Uh, so. And hopefully not have to work 20 hour days. No, no, oh. I'm, I'm done with that. Okay, <laughs> good, good, good. It's good to hear. We all had to put our hours in. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine that might scare off a few people hearing about 20 hour days. <laughs> They're, they're 19 now. It's all cool. <laughs> okay, right. We're, we're cool. They only need 30 minutes sleep in a day. So. Right. Denny, your first job for DHX was as a cleanup artist. So does this mean you drew nothing but janitors? <laughs> Very funny. Uh, there we go. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, I was uh, uh, hired as a cleanup, background cleanup artist. And then at that time, it was talking about pencil, like back to pencil, it's like I was doing a pen of this giant paper and then you do like a clean up lines over it and then scan like the old times. But uh, thank God that's over. <laughs> <laughs> that was the tough time because uh, uh, when I graduated, there's no, no job available at, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And I had to wait for a bit and then that was the first job into uh, Studio B, which is DHX right now. Ooh. Yeah. So how did you earn the advancement to a posing artist, animator, supervisor, and eventually as a director? Oh, to complete bribing. Bribing? Oh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's hard work, dedication, and show your... Um, I mean, we all, we all, like, I say we're friendly people in a way. Uh, we love everyone internally. We care, and I care about my team, not just on the surface. I care about them. I argue with the production, you know, for my teams. When my team suffers, I'll take the calculator to the superiors and say, hey, these guys are not getting paid enough. What are you going to do? To risk my career in a way. And that's how much we will do. And then that kind of brings up, for the studio, in a way, it's, it's a good battle, but they know when, you, when they put you in charge, your team will be taken care of. And that's what we're there. Yeah, anyway. Yeah. But I also do uh, draw uh, janitors. Okay. After, <laughs> after hours. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Tim, while you were working on the Liz Pet Shop, uh, where it is that you left a note for a coworker saying, please be sure in future to be at your desk when I wish to make fun of you? Did she honor this instruction? Uh, she's actually moved to Golden, B.C., so she moved about, you know, an hour away. So she's never at her desk now. Oh. Uh, yeah. No, she was, she was, uh, 
She was at her desk when I didn't want her to be, and she was not there when, you know. Oh. But that sort of sets the, the tone, you know, joking around, leaving leaving. Oh, notes yeah, we, guys, we, we joke around. We're, we're all friends, and we've known each other for a long time. I mean, like, especially the directors. Like, I've known Jason Thiessen worked with me on a show when I directed in 2001. So we're all of us are friends from a long time ago, and it's, it's all lighthearted. And you kind of have to, when you're working that many hours and when you're work, trying to get stuff out, you kind of have to have a sense of humor. So, no, all of us love each other. So, no, uh, we hate each other. Oh, okay. no. <laughs> well, just Danny and I hate each other. But if if someone new comes on the project, though, I mean, is it sort of y'all work together and you either have to become friends really fast, or does there a dynamic to foster? They have to give us fifty dollars. All right, uh, and hundred push-ups. <laughs> you get well. I guess you need strong arms to be an artist. <laughs> no. So, Denny, your career featured a year as an animator and seven years as an animation director. Did you find a greater interest in directing over animating? Oh, for sure. Um, I think there was an opportunity that, like I was saying, how studio put you in, the, in charge of the team, become a manager kind of thing or as an artist. It's, it's because I was animating and I, I like animating and then Jason was sitting right across from me for my first animation job in the studio. And then oftentimes, I'll be like, hey, Jason, how do you, do you want to take a look? And he'll be coming over, oh, yeah, just move this key up there 45 degrees, put these two friends over there, one frame over there, and it'll be done. And be like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then so I learned from all those guys. When we're in the room, this is what the time has changed. Right now, you come to the studio, it's dead quiet. Everybody on their headphones watching their YouTubes, working on two monitors, one YouTube and one like working. And then at the time where we are, there's one small tiny little monitor and then there's a gale blaster, a blasting like heavy metal music that no one likes. <laughs> and we'll just keep the headphone on just so we can listen to the dialogues to anime. But that's the time, the time has really changed in a way. So anyway, so that's what I had to say. <laughs> Did you discover any new YouTube YouTube channels you really like? Oh, I can't. I can't. If I tried a couple of times, I put on YouTube, I can't work. But I have to finish the movie. Oh. So I end up just finish the movie and then work extra two hours. Yeah. <laughs> so I, know, I never do that again. I know how to put on eye makeup now. Because there's a lot of good YouTube channels on that. Oh, there you go. Uh, Tim, the last episode you directed for season six was Top Bolt. Uh, just curious, how tempted were you to include a volleyball scene? Oh, I was, I was super tempted to include a volleyball scene. I don't know if we could have got that past standards and practices the way I would have liked to do it. But, <laughs> but you did include uh, several characters that have become very popular with the fandom. Uh, Sky Stinger and Vapor Trail right. as characters. And then uh, Angel Wings. Who, yes, who's here this weekend. Which is wonderful. I hope everyone says hello to her. What's part of the process of when you're introducing brand new characters into the show like that? It's just, I mean, it's a lot of it's the writers and and Joanne and Christine, who are season that are script editors on season seven. Um, they wrote that episode, and it's it's more on them. Like they have to write an appealing character, and they have to make you care about the character, give it a personality. So, I you know the voice actors. Mm -hmm pump it up a notch for sure, but it all starts with the writing, so I give full credit to those. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, we also do the auditioning for the characters, for the new characters' voice. That's true, yes. Right, so. I don't want to so take humble. any credit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yep. okay. Denny, you <clears throat> entered My Little Pony season one, basically cold turkey. No prior knowledge about ponies. Did that cause any kind of disconnect with the rest of the staff? Uh, not with the staff, I don't think so. Uh, but more myself, because I grew up in Taiwan and I'm, I'm a boy. I don't have any sister siblings. So why would I be watching My Little Pony, the old series, right? Like, like a little horse, you know? I remember they looked like a little horse. Uh, so, but coming to the new show with the, where they put me in charge, it's kind of like, because they know 
on the skill set so that I can take care of whatever they're looking for for the different standards. And that's why we're setting up the different standards. And we also had everybody, it's a whole team of help to develop this way of animating the ponies and make sure they look as organic as possible rather than just like regular two-piece joint cartoons. They look pretty flat in a way. So I think we carried that language even up today. Like the ponies still look moving around three-dimensionally and very soft. A lot of times when I'm in the rough cut, I'm like, wow, how did you guys do that? <laughs> because I don't touch animation anymore. I'm just telling my animation director what to do. But they brought so much on the table that allow us to push the boundaries a little bit more. Very. Now, Tim, on Twitter, you claim that your uh, dwarf name would be Grumpy. Unless you have a cold, then a little bit of sneezy creeps yes. in. You ever felt like more like a doc? No, I, I would say uh, a lot of times sleepy. Oh. <laughs> uh, if I'm not grumpy, I'll go with dopey. So, <laughs> but and on ne never happy, never. But on on Twitter, except now. Oh, yeah, we all have we all have those days. <laughs> He's never grumpy, guys. He's the happiest guy in the studio. Wherever he is around, there's a smile. He brings his little dog, <laughs> and then he say hi to everybody with the two big ears. So cute. But Twitter and all these social media sites though, have, have really increased the, the channels by which fans can communicate with the production staff, with the voice actors and actresses. Uh, do you find that you're, how do you handle that sometimes that force of, of feedback coming through the internet? Um, I just, I mean, I take it for what it is. Like there's, it's just like life. I mean, some people you want to listen to what they have to say and some people you don't. Some people care about they have a, a question that they're genuine about, and some people are just there to cause trouble, and, you know, it's like with anything. So you, you have to kind of, like, take it for what it is and not take anything too seriously, which is what I try to do. Like, it's, it is what it is. It's social media. Um, at the end of the day, my life is my life, and I'm happy with my life. Uh, and I, I'd like to make everybody happy with what I, the work I do, but I try to be happy with the work I do, and if I can make... Honestly, like it sounds cheesy. If I can make children, a couple children smile, I feel like I've done something. So I know people sometimes comment on things like, I don't like this, I don't like this. It's like, it's great. You, you don't have to like it. Um, I respect your opinion, and that's as far as I'll take it. I mean, I can't dwell on that. Just, I can do the best I can do in life, so. Yeah. Very nice, yeah. So, Denny, you've stressed that life drawing is an essential skill for an animator. What advice would you give to people to pursue that skill? I mean, would it be better to go out and draw what they see, or is it better to find studios with other artists? I think a little bit of both. Yeah, because you kind of need to study on the books and then see how the joints work. And then when you go life drawing, or go to class, or go outside, when you draw people, you will have a better understanding how the human works, and then or animals, and it really helps because, like uh, here, I'm saying as an animator or a storyboard artist, whatever, for this field, having a strong poses, uh, it, it's everything. So all of those comes in from your studies of anatomy, your so understanding of everything. So it's it's kind of like the basic. You have to do. I'm still doing live drawing even up to day. When I have time, I go live drawing. This is my. I'm so tired sometimes. I'm like, oh, I can't do it. I tell my wife, I, can you take care of the dog? I can't do this, but I still want to go live drawing because when I go live drawing, it's like, as I draw in five minutes, suddenly I got the second wing. It's like, oh my god, my energy just came back because you're using different side of the brain almost. Uh, at work, it's one, and life drawing is the other. So, and my the other, it's not so warm up. So I need to warm it up a little more. Uh, this is a question for both of you. Uh, word is that DHX will be on like eight episodes at once with a, a year or so production time. Not sure if the, how accurate that is. But how do you keep it straight if you're working on so many episodes at once? You want to go first? Oh, sure. 
<laughs> um, there's different stages. Like there's, you start some of, you know, we were working on an episode and it's only script premise, so you read the script. And then it basically there's, the difficulty of it goes like this and then back down. So when you're at script, it's kind of like it's, a lot of it's on the writer. You make notes. Uh, then we get in the next draft. We make more notes. And Hasbro is making notes, too. Uh, then it goes to storyboard, so it's getting more difficult because you're actually putting, well, first voice record. That's easy because the voice actors are so talented. It goes to storyboard. It's getting more difficult, more difficult. When the, the first animation comes in and you have to decide where you're doing your cuts, that's where the probably the, he, uh, the heaviest lifting is right in that section. Once it gets past that, you, you're on like kind of a downward slope, just like fine tuning. Um, so you, when, you, when we're working on eight episodes, we're only working on one that's up here, then the others are down here. So it's not so difficult. And you've seen them so many times, it's kind of like second nature because we've gone through, it's like, oh yeah, that one, I know what, what I want to do on that one, so it's not too hard. And then we've got, you know, there's three directors, so we're also, we've got each other to bounce ideas off of, so it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's mostly, it comes a little practice too, I think, because you, in your brain, you're actually thinking more than eight episodes at a time. And people come into the office, oh hey, uh, Tim, I have a question for this thing, and it will be like, oh, which season? What episode? Okay. Um, and then, and then we, we can ring a bell pretty quickly because once you read the script like 10 times, you know the story, you know, you know. Um, and, then, um, and then our pipeline, it's built like a, a, these color bars. It's like a colorful letter. And every uh, department, it's like say six months per department. So they just kind of stagger down so where the most stagger is, is where m most of our work will be, you know, in a way, if you can imagine. Because then you're doing everything at the same time for multiple episodes. Mm -hmm. And that's where it is. Yeah, I mean, for sure the worst time is when we have storyboard animatics at the same time as animation. Because we're in the edit suites, like, all day long. And it's rough. And we love it. We do love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best time in the in the edit room. So, yeah, and oh, the, we, the edit room's great. Yeah, and we have good editors. And so, what happens in the edit room stays in the edit room. I'm just kidding. There's no saying like that. No, it's bullshit. <laughs> well, we all have to be careful what happens. That Everfree stays on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! This is recorded. Oh, too late. <laughs> Is there a cutoff period where it's simply too late to add new ideas? Oh yeah, I think so. There's always has to be. Um, otherwise, uh, I don't want to say this, but yeah, we have some clients who are pretty difficult, and that's the problem is that they never give them a, a cutoff. Like this is your deadline for these things, and you have to give your notes in a certain period of time. Once you pass that, you change your mind, Sorry, you can't do it. You know, because once, if you constantly changing ideas, we're not making a movie. You don't have that time and the budget to do it, to fix and the labor, the people to do it. So once you pass a certain period of time, if you keep calling, changing ideas, that means your show will never get it done. So, and then it's also a great training when production only give you, you get two hours in this meeting, going through this episode, you call whatever you need to call, and that was it. Never come back. So that's why when we're in the meetings, we crank, 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 like our brands. It's just like, go, 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 go. And then, okay, next meeting, go, 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 go. And at the end of the day, I, I don't even want to order food. I tell my wife, you decide what we want to eat, <laughs> because my brain is tofu. food. I'm like, I don't want to think. I'm not making any decision. I'm eating chips in front of TV, watching Netflix. That's what it is. You know, so what are you, what's your input? That's my input. <laughs> it's, yeah, this is the same thing. I mean, uh, and the other thing is we have air dates. So it's definitely too late when you get to a certain point. It's, it's like we can't, I mean, you know, somebody said, make this character green, they're blue. Well, we have to go recolor the whole show. Like it's, and the air date is this, and we're also working <laughs> on all these episodes here. You can't do it, so. It depends on the difficulty of the call. I mean, if it's something small, 
you can do it up to the end. But if it's if it's something major, yeah, it's you have to think about it early, and that's part of the process of directing too. Is you anything we want to do, we have to think about at script what we want to do at animation and what we want to do at animation. We think about where we want to leave gaps for music, you know, for uh, composers to put music in. You just have to think ahead like three steps. So you miss stuff, you can catch some small things, but it, there's definitely a cutoff time where it's too late. So there's no mistake, only happy accidents. Yeah. <laughs> Hold Bob Ross. <laughs> Thank you. That man had the most soothing voice. Oh, so good. I have to watch him every day before I go to bed. Then I watch him like five minutes, and I'm like, oh, perfect. Close the iPad and go to bed. <laughs> well, th thank you for answering our questions, but now we want to hear questions from the audience. So everyone, if you could line up, we'll, we'll put out this uh, microphone for you. And we'll These will all be for Denny. <laughs> no. And then make sure you watch the episode uh, airing tomorrow, if you guys haven't seen it. It's a good episode. <laughs> I heard. I heard. You watch it again. One sec. That's an order. Uh, can we get some audio on the guest mic? Give it a try. That right? Oh. Oh, they're working on it. Just give them a sec. Everybody look at that pony in the back. He's got the... Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, That's pretty funny. I like it. I like the model. Looks good. Yeah. What? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Nice work. Oh, we tried. Nice job. He nice did skill research, down. for sure. Yeah, oh, you did. Because I was like, I remember it. I told that in the other oh. comments. That's why you... I, I, owe it to, I owe it to Minty. I, I watched his interview with you and they gave me some follow-up questions. Nice. There you go. Perfect. You know, uh... Lars, try two, try two, try two. Lars. Whoa. Uh, there we go. Much better. Mighty. And that's teamwork. Mighty is the microphone. Guys, thanks for, guys, thanks for being here. Um, my question is a little bit of a follow-up into what you were just talking about. Um, I am curious what of your job is you have time to think and calculate and figure out exactly what you want and how much of it is, I've got to make a decision right now. I'm changing things on the fly. Um, how, how much of that is, is your job? Um, usually the stuff, usually we have enough time to think about something for a little bit of time, uh, like a couple days. Mm. There's, there's not much, like at the mix, you, it's on the fly. But at the same time, we work with super talented people, and my my thing about directing is I like to let talented people do their thing, and I don't want to tell them what to do. I want to just steer the ship through, and that's why I want to work with people who are talented, and what they bring to the show makes the show better. Like, it's not my vision, it's everybody's vision. So I take credit for nothing other than telling people when they occasionally do something I don't like. <laughs> so, but most of the time they do something that I do like, which is great. So, um, yeah, there's, there's normally, there's, it's not stressful. Um, there's nothing like super snap decision. We, uh, we always have time, a little bit of time for I, some, to fix something. Sorry, I, I'm not that smart. So I actually, <laughs> I, I, prep, I prep as much as I can if I have time. I'll prep it at home before I, next day I have to do all these meetings, I'll prep it before I go. Uh, unless I'm super tired, then I have to do it on the fly. Uh, but usually, like Tim say, it's, it's who you work with. Like the teams are super great and cooperative and creative at the same time. So a lot of times when you say something, they bounce back with an even better idea. So, and what, what you know, we just have to pick, pick one. You know, that's it. That's as easy as it, as it goes, in a way. Yeah. Thank and, you, guys. And I'd like to, I will say, uh, to give people more credit, some episodes people love, some episodes people don't love as much. That's fair. From where they start to where they end, I feel like every episode goes from here to here. So if here is not something that everyone gives a 10 out of 10 to, and it's only an 8 out of 10, 
if you had seen where it started at and the work that went into it to get to that, I'm proud of all of everyone, what they've done. So sometimes it, it pays off really big and sometimes you're just like, wow, that was great that we finished it and it looks pretty good because I was really worried. But <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Thank you. Thank you. Star Squirrel, the bearded. <laughs> So I'm really hoping you guys can answer this. Uh, alicorns have been really not fleshed out in the show, and people are just really wondering what is canon. Like, the Journal of the Two Sisters is canon in the show, Castlemania, but stuff like the comment Celestia made and Celestia and Luna made when Flurryheart was born seems to contradict it. So is there a plan to flesh out alicorns? Like, are, are Twilight and Cadence different from Celestia and Luna, or are they the same? So far, we don't have any plans for that part of the story yet. Um, usually, this kind of like plotting stuff, like really important, flesh out like whose backstory it is. So there's still a lot of backstory we haven't told, as you guys would know. Uh, and then we... When we're planning like storytelling stuff, like we have a theme for season by season. So for the alicorn stuff, I I don't know if they want to at this point, as far as I know. So that's all I can say because that's so super. Uh, like a decision has to be made from the Hasbro side. It's really not up to us. Yeah, I'm I'm just asking because there are just boundless theories in the fandom. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. But think, more things will come. You guys will, will be surprised. It's the problem with having things open-ended is that it leaves room for coming up with theories, and, and they you can come up with two different theories that both sound reasonable, which mm. is, you know, part of the the fun of having a fandom, so. And is it not the fun part? Like, you guys ask questions like this because we have strong characters. You want to find out more. Right? Yeah. So keep trying to find out. You know, <laughs> maybe eventually they will come. All right. Thank okay. you. You're Thanks. welcome. Uh, speaking of fleshing out backstories, who here was really happy to meet Fluttershy's family last season? Yeah. yeah. There you go. I was happy to meet Rainbow Dash's parents. There you <laughs> go. Nice. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All yeah. <laughs> did that air in Canada yet? Yeah. yeah oh, okay. It did. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. I remember you. Yeah. Nice I, haircut. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, we met at, back at BAPSCON. That's right. During the, uh, I want to say like a semi-party, I think. Party, yeah. Yeah. Okay, my question to you is, uh, do you give like the, as a director, do you give like a, like ideas to the writers or does the writers give you the, uh, the uh, writing script? Um, that's a good question. Right now, like we're working, we're as a service company, sorry to flesh out this a little more. We're as a service company as DHX2 Hasbro. Mm -hmm. uh, for se uh, we're seven seasons in? We're yep. For seven seasons now, we're working as a partner with them. Not so much as a service company anymore um, because we've been brought up to the table so many good ideas. Yeah. We did uh, like uh, some uh, stories. Story summits. summits. Yeah, with the, like Joanna and Christine came up and we basically did a big whiteboard and wrote we characters' sat, names. sat and down then, together. And we had some that were rejected, which I probably won't, I won't say because I'll probably get in trouble for something. But like you throw out things, it's just like, hey, let's have an idea that Applejack becomes, you know, a truck driver, not really, <laughs> but you throw out dumb things and then it spins into something else. And uh, it's it's good that we can like we just come up with the nuggets of the ideas and then the writers take them and then they they move on with them. And then you know we get to add things. I we add suggestions. Ultimately, it's not our decision, but it's just a different a different brain in it. But we we do have some ideas for stuff, and then some of the stuff. This season, um, that's coming up, like episode seven thirteen, we've wanted to do for a while, uh, yeah. and it, and I think everyone's wanted to do it for a while, and and it finally got to the point where it's like, let's do it. So, I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. I'm just. I'm just uh, I don't know what I'm allowed to say, so I'm not going to. Oh, yeah. Pointing it. Yeah. yeah. Pointing it. <laughs> 
But with, um, yeah. Okay. With the Canada release, not everyone here, I think, is following the Canada, so we want to keep spoilers to a minimum, even if they've technically aired in our neighbors to the north. But I yeah. appreciate I appreciate your subtlety, sir. That was very, very subtle. <laughs> like oh, I said, yeah. I'm not saying it. I'm I appreciate just, it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. But do Thanks. watch the episode uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much. Danny really wants you to watch the episode tomorrow. Yeah, I work really hard on it. So, <laughs> so watch it, please. Yeah. yeah. I, I'll say about the episode tomorrow, it was one of the most fun records I've been in because it was, there weren't a lot of people and it was a lot of Tabitha and Tabitha's hilarious. So, you know. Yeah. So, hi there. So, this is going to be directed towards Silver Quill and Dr. Wolf. Yes. Oh. Now, one of the most important things that I've actually seen. Uh, <laughs> One of the oh, most they're, important they're, they're, things no, is actually a character creation. So what inspired you to choose the personas that ultimately became your characters for your channels? Well, I, th I think this might tie in with uh, the, the production process for the show. Just starting with an idea and seeing what works, what you want. Uh, in my, my case, I, a lot of people online use pony uh, characters as, stand, as their personas. I tried to be different, so I found a book on mythical creatures and found hippogriffs. I thought, well, I, am, I have been called a horse's patoot, so this is <laughs> biological fact. Uh, and Doctor, I think your reason was very similar. Wanted yeah. When I was starting out, I already knew there are thousands upon thousands of other pony OCs out there. How could I possibly design something that'll stand out from the crowd? Because I am not an artist by any means. <laughs> But if I made a wolf character, it instantly stands out. Even if it doesn't fully belong in the world of Equestria, I still managed to make a name for myself because, hey, I'm so different from what most other people try to do. And in the show, when you guys are introducing creatures like the Trihorn Bunyip or <laughs> Quarry Eels, I'm, I'm, that That's Yeti thing, you're coming up with very original designs. What's the process like when you create new creatures for Equestria. Well, you know, those mythical creatures, they do have original, you know, already image. So we kind of like based on those mm -hmm. to do modification to to uh, to design to the uh, show needs. And that's pretty much. Yeah, like, I mean, the, the, I mean, the bunny up was, I mean, it's kind of based on Loch Ness Monster type designs. And it's yeah. just, I mean, you just have fun with it, so. Yeah, and most of those, don't forget, like, uh, we say this all the, over and over again, like we're just directors. There's still like Hasbro on top of us, watching us every move. It's like, hey, <laughs> wait a second. Oh, whoa, 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 slow down. So that answers the question about how you decided to pick up the characters, but I was more curious about the personalities that you decided oh, to give the characters. I, I greatly appreciate your questions and we, we'd be happy to answer them, but we don't want to take away focus from our directors. Could we talk with you after the panel? Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> What's your name? I'm James. Hi. 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 Hey, so uh, yesterday I watched all of the season seven episodes that have been released in the US so far. One thing I noticed in, I can't remember what it's called, the, the Fluttershy episode where she wants to build the animal Fluttershy sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yes. right. Yeah. Um, sanctuary, uh, yeah. Without like giving too much away for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, I noticed that Fluttershy seems to have changed a lot since season one. Mm -hmm. You know, she used to be like you know scared of her own shadow yeah. and yep. super timid, Submissive. and now she's yeah. now she's like really she seems really really bold. Like in this new episode, I hardly saw any bits of her character that seemed timid or shy or sensitive at all, and. That, that got me to wondering, how big of a challenge is it to, you know, keep, like, characters like Fluttershy and, you know, the other members of the main six, um, the way that they are flawed, but then also get them to grow over time? Because... Right. I think, I that was my episode uh, that I worked on. Um, it's funny that you say the word flawed because... I'm like not, it's flaws. because that will be coming up in a future episode that you'll that word will resonate with you a bit i'm not oh. going to say any more than that but i think uh in that case there's everybody grows 
and there's the constant struggle of like I, I'm tired of seeing Fluttershy. She's always this way. She's always meek. Has she learned nothing? Um, you have to assume that people learn things through life. Uh, she is still who she is. In that episode, she's bold because it's something that is her was her passion. So she's it's got something she's focused on and she's bold about. Like she's always wanted to build the animal sanctuary. Um, but I think she's not going to walk out and be bold about something she doesn't care as much about. It's not, you know, she's not going to go to the barista and say, I ordered almond milk and just scream at somebody. <laughs> um, but that's, that's like her lifelong, her dream. So she's, the point was that she's grown and she's going to stand up for something she really, really, really believes in. Um, but you'll notice that she, she is still going to be fluttershy. It's, it's just difficult because you don't want to get stuck in the rut of like, the same stories, the same characters. Why is this person always making the same mistakes over and over and over? Like it's it's charming at the beginning, but after a while you start to they're not human. They don't breathe if they don't learn or at least change a little bit. So it's it's just it's a tricky thing to to balance between. But in that case, she was very like in some in some scenes I would say she's probably a little more aggressive than I would have thought, but that's... Yes, she is. But <laughs> Yes, she is. And it was, and watching, you know, Andrea do the lines, it was great, because it's like, um, it could have been toned down a little bit, but, you know, I thought, I, I really enjoyed the episode, like, working on it. It was, it was something different, and I, I like, I like Slice of Life episodes a lot, because it's, it's, I mean people like it's it's what it is it's you can focus on one thing and it's not just a broad encompassing thing so i like character development and slice of life so i really enjoyed that episode so but isn't fluttershy pretty timid in the beginning when the when those construction yeah yeah okay. yeah, so yeah, yeah that's that's part of it that's the contrast right okay so that's how i see it yeah anyway and it was it was nice because she didn't have to have People didn't have to tell her to stick up for herself, which always happens. She it's figured like, out she needed She to. did it for herself, yeah. for a change. So, yeah. And then a person has to grow. Don't worry, she doesn't yell anymore in <laughs> season seven. <laughs> That's, it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Is it wrong that I actually do want to see a video of Fluttershy shouting at a Starbucks barista? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh. Howdy, folks. I have Hi. a really simple question for you. I love simple questions. Hello. All right. Well, what is your favorite part of your job as being a director on the show besides being here? Besides being what? Besides being here. Oh, what, sorry. Can you say the end of the question again? Sure. Uh, what is your favorite part of the job of being a director on this show besides being here? Oh. oh. Um, you want to go first? I'll go for sure. Working with Denny Liu. <laughs> That's, that works. Um, no, my the, the, the favorite part is like it was part. It goes in it, partly with that. It's working with talented people. Like it's you know, and and also seeing something go from a nugget of an idea to a fully mixed thing. And especially like when we're doing songs with Daniel, um, you know, you get the scripts like, hey, I think we were going to put a song in here, and you remember back to like, oh, we had this idea for this and what people take that and turn it into by the end when you're sitting in the final mix. Because um, we sit in a, like a nice room with big speakers, big screen, watch it. And it's, I mean, TV is great, but when you're hearing it and like sitting in a dark room with like, you know, five of us in there, it's pretty awesome to see what it's turned into so it's just I would say the, the growth process of each episode is my favorite part yeah for me too it's it's pretty um, rewarding at the end because you put in we really put in so much effort in every stage and making sure not just the product is good we have to make sure our supervisor are not grumpy as well yeah. you can't give them re revisions that they disagree and you just keep giving to them. They're gonna quit their job, and you're gonna, we're gonna have no show. So you're gonna, have, it's play the balance in every stage, in everything, making sure at the end 
everyone, most of the people are happy. That's what it is, right? And that, that we do a good job. Oh, well, for such a simple question, you answered that very thoroughly. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Welcome. Sorry, I'm short. Um, That's great. That's fine. We work uh, so, with a lot of short people, so we're good. Yeah, you're not that short, Twilight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, my name is Ilona, and um, there's a new My Little Pony coming out in the future, but um, I've noticed that there's a whole bunch of new characters, uh, different races of uh, characters coming in, and like such as uh, Hippogriff Guard. Um, so oh, I was wondering... Oh, oh, oh. We, yeah. we don't want to go too far into spoilers oh. because many people might be actively uh, avoiding uh, news until it's October. Uh, so, but, so if we can just but, keep it vague about new uh, creatures. Yeah. So like, what are you, uh, your inspirations for like the new character designs? Um, um, and what not? For the new character? Yeah, usually... A lot of times we will have some kind of idea based on the the writing. We know what ca what type of person this is, and we design based on that. And then it's also because we have a really strong uh, designer that used to be our Cora was our art director for season six, and she's still designing the show right now. Um, and then a lot of times we just like you go explore, and we take it from there. And then usually we can tweak it from there, and usually tell. Yeah, pretty good. And I think a lot of the creatures are based on mythology, and just other ideas, and just incorporating and mishmashing like what I like about this and what I like about that, and combining them together. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Um, right. What advice do you have for young filmmakers and animators just starting out? Um. I say don't give up <laughs> that and also if you're in school finish school a lot of times people got a job offer then they jump out uh, a lot of times when when you move up as you, if you have a goal to move up some people don't want to move up they just want to be animator forever but if you have a goal to move up to finish your uh, school you will pay it off at the end that's my advice also I, I would say Find somebody that you respect, that whose work you respect, and ask them a lot of questions. Because most people I find who are really talented are also really willing to share what they know because there's no real competition. It's not like, you're going to take my job. I'm not telling you anything. I, like, I want to make people better because in the end, it makes my day better. Like If my animation director is really good, I don't have to work as hard, and I can go home and you know enjoy being home. So I want people to get better, and I want people to t try to take my job or like do something in a different show, like like me. That's you know I want people to grow. So you find someone who you respect and just pepper them with questions as much as you can, and they'll they'll help you. He's saying him right now, just so you know. If you don't get him, <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. So hello, and thank you very much for your time and for being here. First oh, of all, thank you. Let's, let's angle your mic up. Yeah, I'll just do it myself, sorry. Um, <laughs> so a question directed to both of you, but mostly for uh, Mr. Stubby. I hope I, hope I didn't meant butcher your name. Sorry. That's, I, I went through school so many <laughs> okay. so for times, Tim, and I've, I've heard okay. it, it means nothing uh, to me. <laughs> how, much, how much is sound important during the development of the show, and has the sound importance um, kind of impacted your style of directing for the animation side? Um, I think sound is, is super important. It's like it, it sets the mood and you have to like we, we kind of know what we want. Um, again, like we're not creating it, but we make notes for sound. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times I don't think people understand all the stuff we have to do because, you know, we're, we're basically at it from script to sound. And, you know, Daniel writes the songs for sure. Mm -hmm. And he's super talented, but like we have a meeting and sit down and it's like, this is the feeling I want for the song. You go be brilliant. And then he goes <laughs> and does that. Is it kind of the same for the sound effects department as well? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's definitely, there's, there's stock sound effects that, you know, yeah. you're going to hear over and over and over again. But it's, you know, there's, there's certain times it's just like, I really need this sound here because it sets the mood. Like the difference, um, other shows I've directed, 
uh, we've had problems with standards and practices doing a scene where somebody gets thrown into a locker because mm -hmm. we put a sound effect in that sounds like metal slamming. Yeah. And the next time we put the same scene through and we put like a boing noise, and they're like, that's great. It's the exact same thing, but because it has a different sound effect, it's like, that's funny <laughs> instead of that person is getting injured seriously. So you, makes sense. Yeah, so you have to think what your intention is with each scene sometimes, and it's like sometimes you want a specific sound for something to convey something. So yeah. it, you have to think about that. Right. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Appreciate the answer. And see Thank you later. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you doing? Good, thanks. Good. Thank you. Uh, my main question is, you mentioned something about there were themes for each season. So personally, this can go for both Silver Quill and Dr. Wolf, and you two as well. As well. Uh, the question is, what is, would you say is your personal favorite season based on the theme? For said season, you want to start? You're uh, you're in the head. Uh, I I'm gonna say I have always enjoyed season two as it was its theme seemed to be growth. Mm -hmm. It was with the show had 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 its first season, it found its footing, and it was moving steadily upwards until the main six no longer just being asked to attend events were now planning events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can pick one. It, it's really hard for me to just pick one. If I would like to request a Jeopardy theme song from the audience. <laughs> da, na, 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 na. If you can't pick one, you can just say out of two, three, four seasons. Like, which one Multiple or something. Mm. Take your time. I am quite partial to season five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And from our show directors, what, what oh, okay. your favorite season? Um, I, I'll say season four because I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> but season four was so strong. The finale blew my mind. That was definitely. I I went to gym and said, "What have you done to your team? <laughs> <laughs> this is horrible." <laughs> oh my! But it was great. Um, I would say I, I like season three a lot. Um, it was short. <laughs> the whole line. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't have to work on the last episode at all, so that made me happy. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't really a two parter, which is great because mm -hmm. those are as good as they look. And look what he was saying. Oh, what did you do to your team? Mm -hmm. Like I worked on um, the wedding episodes, and it was. I'm not gonna say awful because it it was it was a struggle. Oh, like there's a lot of stuff going on, and it was a lot of a lot of work. And I I mean I got asked to stay on extra to help out because it was just that hard. And I that's see. Um, but yeah, like season I like season three. I like too many Pinkie Pies is probably my favorite episode. <laughs> oh my. Just because I love pink. Like I like cartoons. At the end of the day, I like funny, and I love Pinkie Pie, and. Uh, and I put a lot of work into that one in particular, and I, it's one of my favorites in the in an Applejack's family reunion. Even though it has the bats in it, I really like that too because the bats were a nightmare. That's good. <laughs> and since I asked you what my, your favorite season was, I'll say that season three, four, and five were maybe my most personal favorite seasons to watch as I saw more growth and more change to the status quo. And I like to see the evolution try to take chances, and these chances have been working very well. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Guys, we're in the final five or so minutes, so if we can ask these questions, a little bit of a lightning round. All right, lightning round. Um, if somebody has a script that they, for an idea for an episode, is there a way for them to submit that to DHX? Well, that's another thing. Like, uh, scripts are based on, script writers are in LA. Uh, they're not DHX based. All those writers are LA based and Hasbro is in contact with them. So if you have a script, submit it to Hasbro. Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello, my name is Alex. I was wondering, out of all the episodes that you directed, was there an episode that felt personal to you? 
I had to say uh, Gauntlet of Fire for me. Yeah, I spent a lot of time on those dragons. <laughs> They're super hard. <laughs> um, I don't even know if I have one I would say is, is super personal. Um, maybe, yeah, I don't, I don't have one. Sorry. Wait, isn't there one? Oh, I have to ask you. Mm -hmm. Is there one that says Amber and... No, no never mind. Coming. That's coming out. Okay, that's still coming right. out. I can't say anything. Don't spoil yeah. things, Danny. Yeah, no. <laughs> All good. All good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Nathaniel. Uh, I only got one good question, and it's, uh, do you think that the plain existence of, like, an adult fan base has had an effect on the show and the staff? Oh, of course. For sure. Mm -hmm. Look, we're here because of you guys. We won't be here if you guys weren't here. You know, that's what it is. And then... And it, it's 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 not us. It's everyone. This is like a whole. It's just an entire universe teamwork together. We're we're working on this thing to keep this thing going, right? In a way, why are they still producing season seven? Because they know there's still a big hit, right? So, and Hasbro is still selling toys. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Who's your favorite pony, and why is it Discord? <laughs> you want to answer that? My favorite pony, as I already said, is Pinkie Pie. By, yeah. Like far and above. I'm the same Pinkie Pie for me. Okay. Because we're, I think we're both kind of the same personality of Pinkie Pie. You know, really want to have fun. Yeah. Uh, you can find us in every party. I'll be in the. Is there a. Uh, like a dancing party? Danny's going dancing later. Yeah, yeah the, the Grand Gala they're hosting here, I think. There you go. Yeah, uh, you probably find me here somewhere, yeah. all right? <laughs> In a corner dancing. <laughs> that is an awesome hat, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. you. like to wear it. <laughs> yeah, give it a go. All right. Oh, what? Ah, there we go. I've been trying to get the toupee. This should work. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Almost you should wear it because that's like a wolf. Well, that's more of a fox, though. Fox, isn't it? I know. It looks more like a fox. Oh, well. Yeah, I should just, return it to its rightful owner. <laughs> He's waiting. He's like, oh, can I have my hair back? <laughs> okay. Please. Hello. I'm oh, sorry. So, my question was. Is there a some sort of deeper reason for the, in season four, I think it was the almost constant visits to the castle of the two sisters, and then in, at the end of the season, they had the friendship castle, and in season six, was there a deeper reason behind the fact that they almost, Starlight Glimmer almost never showed up for season six, um, despite that time being that when she would have all the friendship lessons, but she's having more development in season seven. Actually, uh, do you, yeah. Um, we, you know, I don't know, some of you already found out, like in season six, there's, uh, there's a lot of scenes that we planted uh, Starlight in the background somewhere. Um, and then a, a right. few fans on YouTube. No, season six. Oh, season six. Season six. And then uh, a lot of you already found out on YouTube. Somebody found out. Oh, there's a starlight watching the town. They're ready. She's ready for her That's plan. You guys didn't. It's season five. It's season season five. Season. Yeah. You planted it's her in season five, and she was more common in season six. But believe me, I get the numbers oh, wrong she, all the time. Oh, she transformed in season. Six. She be. Yeah, she yeah. became Twilight's oh, friendship right. student season in season six. I'm so horrible. <laughs> that's, okay. That's, that's okay. I tried to help him, but he. he I didn't want to believe him. <laughs> oh. But basically, Starlight is the ultimate Where's Waldo of season five. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, right. It was fun to try and pick those to up. Find oh, them, yeah. oh, look at that. There's one you guys haven't found yet. I, I don't think you oh. will. Hey, yeah. oh. You do realize we're YouTube reviewers yeah. and you've just given us a challenge, right? Okay, somebody somewhere has to now yeah. track that down. Yeah. That's, they're going to consider that a challenge. Right. Oh, it's, the, the it's challenge in, is out there, bronies. Are you up to it? It's in a song. It's in a song. This is a hint. Yeah. It's, it's in a song. It's in a song. Yeah. All, right. All right. Thank you, sir. Well, thank, you. thank you. Thank you.
Guys, we are, we are at the end of the panel. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work on this show and uh, creating such a fine quality product. Thank you, guys. You guys have been great. Thanks. Thank you. Right. Guys, have, enjoy the rest of Everfree.